Hi, everyone. Welcome to your first mini lecture as we have our introduction into applied sociology and social change. I'm wearing headphones, not so I can hear you, obviously, but in the hopes that the audio from this will be slightly better. I'm still, of course, working from home, so doing the best we can. Um, okay, so I'm going to share my screen with you in just a moment, and I've created a very, very basic PowerPoint to keep me on track, but also for you to refer to. And so it's not just my face that you're looking at for this. Um, but I want to get you guys in the right mind frame before we do that. All of you should have taken intro to sociology by now and probably possibly other sociology classes as well. And so I want you to remember to enter this class space with that mind, mind frame, that mindset that we are thinking sociologically. And for some people that comes really easily and for others, it's a little more difficult and both are okay. Either way, this space is where we want to be using that type of thinking. You may remember in your intro class, learning about the sociological imagination, which is really the ability to see outside of ourselves to see problems from other people's perspectives, to see issues, circumstances from other people's perspectives, and to see how our own personal problems connect to the greater world and how they're really all intertwined. And so keep that in mind as we're moving forward. And I'll touch on that a little bit more in just a moment as well. I'm gonna share my screen here with you and we are gonna go over what to expect in this module as well as what your assignments are. Okay. So your introduction, as I said, we'll go over your what this um, this module is going to look like, what your readings are, what your assignments are, and then sort of my overview uh, perspective in my own words as well. Okay. So what is applied sociology? You do have a reading that covers that. Um, and so you'll be reading about that as well. But really what applied sociology is, is doing sociology. You're, the author of your textbook is, I really enjoy this book. I hope that you guys do as well. But you know, he, one of the big points that he's making throughout the entire thing is how we can use sociology to make the world a better place. And so in sociology, in your intro courses or any other classes that you've taken, a lot of times it's really eye opening for people to learn about some of the injustices that are all around us. Some of the, the social norms that we engage in that we never think twice about. And then you take a sociology course, you take a sociology course and all of a sudden you're like, I can't believe I never noticed these things before that everyone doesn't understand these things. But then kind of what do you do with that, right? And so in this class, we are going to be applying sociology using the practical side of what you already have learned and what you will be learning and figuring out what we can do with that. Specifically here, what we can do with that as it relates to social change. And by social change, we just mean alterations to social order. Now, social order can look like a bunch of different things. It could be um, our inequalities in our education system, unequal access to health care. It could be um, gender norms in society that confine us. It could be um, like here in the South, one of the ways that, that we have order is by often maintaining symbols of our heritage that some people find offensive, but that is the way things are and have been. So that would be the order of things. So social change is the attempt to alter some of the way that things are or the way that things have been. And we're not all gonna agree. I can guarantee you, even in this class, we're not all gonna agree on what those changes or those alterations should look like. But the goal 
is going to be to achieve the betterment of the society that we live in while thinking sociologically. So we are taking what we know about sociology and applying it to learn how to make the world a better place. Um, one of the big things that comes up, and I'll go over in just a moment, and something I just said is about social justice issues. Um, keep in mind that a social justice issue is kind of encompasses everything that I just mentioned. There are all kinds of nonprofit organizations that attempt to make the world a better place in some form or fashion. Almost all of those arise out of this awareness that something needs to change, that there is some inequality, something that could be better. Um, so you may hear when I talk about social change, I kind of use it interchangeably with social justice because they're, they are sort of hard to separate. Um, I don't want to go off on a huge tangent about that. I want to continue moving forward, but just keep that in mind. We'll talk more about social justice issues in just a moment. Okay, um, this, your readings for this week. Of course, in your modules, I mentioned this in my intro video, you have required readings and optional readings and resources, and this is just the required ones. You're gonna read chapter one in your textbook, Sociology and Social Change. It's really just an introduction to what I just mentioned a moment ago, but much more elaborate talking about what that all means one of my favorite parts about one of my favorite lines i guess in that chapter is the author saying that sociology is a sort of a heightened form of social awareness and so i hope that when you take when you when you're reading that you kind of keep that with you as we're moving through the class um, so you're going to read chapter one i'm not going to talk too much about that um, Next, you're gonna read, or maybe not next, I don't care what order you read these in, really, the textbook should probably be first for chapter one, but then you're gonna read this, uh, this article toward a Buddhist sociology. Now, um, I was talking to my husband about this course and I, I mentioned this article and he, his first comment was, do you think that that's gonna be offensive? And I certainly hope not. And your, um, your author, the author of your textbook, actually talks about Buddhism very early on. And if I could rename that article, if I had written it, I would. Because to me, what they're trying, what the, what the author of that article is trying to do is to draw some of the principles from Buddhism into sociological practice. This goes hand in hand with your textbook because what we are learning is to be sociologically mindful. What you will see as you go through the book, even in chapter one, is that what the author of the book is really trying to do is, I mentioned that heightened form of awareness, is to see things from all different perspectives, to sit and contemplate on topics, on injustices, on facts that are what we call inconvenient truths that we don't like to hear, to sit with them and reflect on them and to be mindful, to be mindful of what we're saying, what we're reading, what we're thinking, what we're feeling. And you can draw a connection to Buddhism from that. But this is not a religious course. I don't teach religion, theology, any of that. So. What I hope that you take away from that article really has nothing to do with Buddhism, but instead with some of the principles in Buddhism that can be applied to sociologically mindful thinking. And if anyone has, I mean, if there's, if anyone has passionate feelings about that and wants to discuss it with me, please do. Um, you will never be tested over anything, you know, like based in religion in this class ever 
that there will never be a right or wrong answer that has anything to do with religion ever, um, because those are, you know, our own personal beliefs and values. And so I don't want you to take anything from, I don't want you to take away from this, like she's trying to teach Buddhism because I wouldn't even know how to do that. But this article is valuable because it does help us draw the link between some of these Buddhist principles and sociology. Okay, enough about that. Um, the next article actually, to further prove my point or <laughs> maybe make it worse, I don't know. Um, social work for social justice. This is the um, National Association of Social Workers Code of Ethics, which was actually written in part um, by the US Conference of Catholic Bishops. So, but the National Association of Social Workers is not a religious organization. Rather, there are parts of Catholicism <laughs> that can be drawn to a code of ethics where we're seeking, you know, dignity and the rights of people. So that's a pretty quick read. It's really just more like a list with an explanation of those. And that is hopefully going to get us moving from the idea of mindfulness and, um, you know, mindful practices in sociology, moving over towards how that applies to social justice. And then lastly, you're going to read a very basic um, overview of applied sociology. So the goal here is, again, to go from the idea of mindfulness and um, how we can be mindful sociologically and what it means to apply sociology, moving over to social change, and then kind of the how to do that. In your optional readings for this week, there's not any videos. Um, the optional readings and resources are, you can read them or not. They could be, they're all there because they could be beneficial to you. Um, it's like, to enhance your knowledge, but also in your discussion forum. One of the things, I'm going to flip to the next slide, one of the things that um, in your optional readings that you may want to look at is, I just realized I have the optional readings misnumbered on your course module. Um, I'll correct that, is um, the social issues that you care about most is what it's called, but it's really just a a list of all the different social justice issues. So in your first discussion, you're gonna be talking about being sociologically mindful and what kind of social change we want to make by doing that. And then in the area of social change, what, or in the arena, I guess I should say of social change, what kind of social justice issues are we the most interested in? And there's a list of them here on the page. I don't even know if you can really read these clearly in this way, and it doesn't matter anyway, because you have a whole list, as I said, in your optional readings. But when thinking about what social issue you are interested in, I'm not gonna ask you for the course to pick just one and stick with it. If you are an advocate for gun control or an advocate for, you know, the really, anything. If that's what you want to talk about for this first discussion, you don't have to necessarily talk about it again for subsequent discussions and assignments. But I asked in your introduction uh, discussion for you guys to list some of the things that you're already interested in, and I know some of you have done that. And a lot of times the issues that come to us as feeling the most important are ones that we have a personal connection with. Um, and that could be, I mean, it could be literally anything. The list here, that, that, in case you can't see it, but, you know, it mentions adoption, affirmative action, alcoholism, animal rights, capital punishment, child labor, death penalty, immigration, homelessness, global warming, gambling, euthanasia, terrorism. I mean, the list is endless. It's pretty much any issue that affects humans that you can think of. And once you start thinking in this way, you will start to notice these things everywhere. 
um, because sociology is all I do, you know, all day long, that's kind of how my, the mode that my brain often stays in. And it, just as an example, this morning I was on uh, Facebook. My daughter says only old people have Facebook, but you know, um, and my dad posted an article about the school that he went to when he was a child. My dad's like 75. So just keep that in mind for the, you know, how long ago this was, but the article was praising um, that that school when it was first founded was one of the first ones to get the idea to use property, the money from local properties to fund schools for free education. And this is relevant. So <laughs> hear me out. Um, so currently our public schools are still funded by property taxes. So that means that in every neighborhood, the people who own homes or the landlords, the property owners, whoever owns the property where people live, residential property, the funding from the taxes from, uh, from those properties is what in part funds our schools, our public schools. Um, probably most of you are of the age to realize that our public schools are not all the same they don't have the same textbooks, the teachers don't get paid the same, um, they don't have access to the same technologies. There's a lot of differences and some of that can be accounted for because the funding comes from the properties around them. So what that often means is that in areas where houses are worth more, this is a very simple explanation. So if anyone of you works in education can be like, she's way off. I, I don't think it's way off. I, re I realize this is simplified. Um, the schools in areas where there are high value properties and expensive homes, those schools will get more funding than schools in areas where um, the houses are not worth as much, which means that lower socioeconomic areas are going to have schools that are less well-funded. We've tried changing this by rezoning, redistricting, all different kinds of things. Um, so there have been attempts at social change, but I guess the point I'm making is that it doesn't, you don't have to look very far outside of your own bubble to see some kind of social issue that would be worth taking a, a harder look at to see if there's something worth changing. I hope all that made sense. I'm really trying to talk to you myself here, talking to you guys the way that I would if I was standing in front of a classroom. So sometimes that's gonna come across really great and sometimes, you know, I'm gonna miss the mark. But hopefully that made sense. Okay, your discussion for this week. This is what you care about, right? This is where the, this is where the points are. So let's, let's get into this. Um, your discussion for this week is, I put here, connecting the social justice issue of your choice to sociological mindfulness. So I want you guys to consider the social justice issue, the issue in society that you are most interested in or would like to change, and then consider the things that we've learned about in this course, like being sociologically mindful is a key one, and you're going to um, you're going to read all about that in that um, those first that first article that I mentioned, as well as in your textbook. And then I want you in your discussion to tell us about this social justice issue, why you care about it, what it means to you, some tidbits and facts about it, um, and then tell us as well how being sociologically mindful could help you better understand this issue. Um, so I think that will make a lot more sense once you read the first chapter, but if at any point it does not, you know, then obviously reach out to me and let me know. You already know what your discussion forum guidelines are, and so keep those in mind, but I also want you guys to feel free to use as much 
of your own sort of sociological imagination and critical thinking as possible. So it may be, it may be beneficial if you're feeling uncertain to, if you want to post early in your discussion and then say, ask me to take a look at it and see if you're missing anything, that's totally fine. Um, this is a new course at Troy. So, you know, what I expect out of you guys is simply to be trying your best and using as much sociological thinking and critical thinking as you can. The benefit to you, given that this is a new course, is that I cannot say, oh, last term students did X, Y, and Z for this. You know, um, you guys have a lot of freedom here and I, I think that's gonna work to your benefit. Um, okay, your quiz, you also have a quiz this week, as I mentioned in the first, um, in your introduction module, um, your every week you're gonna have a discussion and or a quiz or a writing assignment usually. Um, and in this one, it's a quiz. It is just 10 questions and it's based on the article Social Work for Social Justice that is in your required reading. So um, you've got an hour to take it. You'll see that when you click on the, um, when you click on the quiz, you do only get one attempt. So be sure you're ready to take it when you sit down to do that. Okay. I hope that all of that made sense. Again, I'm, I'm trying to talk to you here the way that I would if you were, if you were in class with me. The disadvantage to that is that I can't hear what you have to say back or you can't say, I don't understand that part, can you clarify? Um, which is why I'm available, I'm using Zoom right now. I can talk to you this way anytime you like. I can FaceTime you. However, if you have questions, something seems uncertain, let me know. Um, okay, I'm gonna be done with this and uh, I'm sure you're tired of seeing my face, listening to my voice now, so you can get on with chapter one or module one and then let me know if you have questions.